السلام عليكم كيف الحال اسمي أركان عطرية أهلا وسهلا السلام عليكم اسمي أركان عطرية Welcome or welcome back to عربي سهل Easy Arabic Podcast Welcome to season 2 I'm so happy, so excited to start season two with you all together studying Arabic. Maybe it's part of your New Year's resolution. I hope so. I'm here to help you carry on your resolutions. And if it's not, maybe it's a new thing you can pick up this year. Before I start the lesson, I would like to give a big shout out, not to a specific person on social media, but to listeners from countries. Well, as a podcaster, I can see where my listeners are from. And I have here some top performing countries, we can call them. Big shout out to Brazil, Japan, Germany, United Kingdom, Indonesia, and Qatar. And number one on this list, United States. Thank you all for listening to my lessons and having the desire and motivation to study Arabic with me. I hope we stick around forever. And uh, looking forward to more interaction with all of you and from other countries as well. Season two, lesson one is about al tarif I'm sure you're familiar with al tarif in English. Well, you've heard of the words algebra, alcohol, algorithm. These are a few of many words borrowed from Arabic into English. And... Algebra in Arabic is al-jabr, so you have the al in the beginning. Alcohol is al-kuhul, we also have here al in the beginning. Algorithm is in Arabic al-khawarizmiya, aw al-khawarizmiyat. These three words and many other borrowed words, they were borrowed all as one chunk. You got the al-tarif in the beginning and the noun. What is al tarif anyway? What is this al in the beginning of the word? Well, al tarif is the one and only article in the Arabic language. We don't have indefinite article or definite article sort of distinguishing. al tarif is a definite article and it's the only article that we have in the language. It's similar to the definite article in English, the. And I say similar, not the same because of two main reasons. One, al tarif is a prefix, which means it's attached to the beginning of the word. And it's not a separate word like in English, so it doesn't count as a word. And al tarif is attached only to nouns and adjectives. Unlike in English, where you have the in the beginning of the nominal phrase, for example, the big house, in Arabic, al tarif is added to both the noun and the adjective. So you've got al-dar al-kabira. Dar, which means house. We learned this previously in season one. And kabira is big. So the big house in Arabic is al-dar al-kabira. Now, if you paid attention to how I pronounced the word al-dar and the word al-kabira, you realize there's a bit of difference. Well, here's the thing. al tarif changes pronunciation depending on the first letter of the word. Let me explain. al tarif is composed of two letters, alif and lam. So, when the word starts with harf shamsi, which is a sun letter, we do not pronounce the lam in al tarif and we put stress on the letter itself. Letters in the Arabic alphabet that are harf shamsi are ta, tha, dal, dal, ra, zain, sin, shin, sad, dad, ta, dha, lam, nun. Similarly to how I pronounced ad-dar in my previous example, I did not pronounce the lam in al tarif and I put a stress on the del. Here are three expressions we learned in season one that follow this rule. The first one, assalamu alaikum, assalam. The word salam 
peace starts with an S, which is a harf shamsi. That's why we do not pronounce the lam and we put a stress on the S. In the transliteration of these expressions, you should see that the letter is written twice. But it's no coincidence. It's because we stress the letter. Similarly, sabah al-nur. In the word al-nur, which means light or the light, we don't pronounce the lam in the al-tarif and we emphasize the noon. Sabah al-nur. Another phrase, ma'a salami. That's when we're saying goodbye to somebody. Ma'a salami. Is salami. We have here al-tarif. And again, we don't pronounce the lamb and we stress the S. The other type of letters in the Arabic alphabet are called harf qamari, moon letter. If the word starts with one of these letters, we pronounce the lamb in the alit tarif. These letters are alif, ba, jim, ha, kha, ain, rin, fa, qaf, kaf, mim, ha, Wow, yeah. Some of the expressions that we covered in season one Sabah al khair. Sabah al khair. You can hear the kh in the beginning of the word al khair and definitely can hear the lamb. Another example Kif al hal. How are you? Al hal. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. And the last expression, which also means, how are you? Shul akhbar. Shul akhbar. Here's something you should do as an exercise. Go back to season one, lessons 10, 11, 12, and 13, where we learned nouns and adjectives. We had 20 nouns and 20 adjectives. And try to put al tarif before each one of these nouns and adjectives and see if you pronounce the lamb in the al-tarif or you don't, which means, does the word start with harf shamsi or harf qamari? I think this should be a very interesting and enjoyable exercise. Go ahead and try it. Al-tarif is very important in the Arabic language and I decided to start season two with this lesson because it's one of the basics that you should know and start learning how to use and handle it better as lessons progress and as you improve your level in Arabic. Today's cultural point. As mentioned before in previous lessons, in cultural points, previous lessons in season one, Arabs put a huge emphasis on respect and respecting all the people is very, very important. Unfortunately, you might see it less these days with the new generation not learning proper manners. Nonetheless, it's very important in the Arabian culture. So here's something that we do. In season one, lesson 20, I mentioned that one of the ways that we address older people that we don't know or we're not uh, specifically related to is by calling a woman, an older woman, khalti and an older man, ammi. Here's another way that we show respect to older people. Now, this is not just younger people using this with older people, but also older people using it with each other. And that's giving a nickname. Well, I'm not sure we should call it a nickname. Well, let me explain. So calling a woman by her first name, if she's an older woman, it's a bit rude. Here is what happens when this woman gets married and has a son. She is called Um, and the name of her son means the mother of this son. It could be her firstborn child, a son, or it could be her fifth born child, a son. As soon as she has the son, she is called Um and the name of her son. So, if a woman has a son, she names him Majd, which means glory, beautiful name. She would be called Um Majd, Um Majd, her entire life. Anyone who shows respect to this woman, especially when she gets older, calls her Um Majd. Similarly, a man is called by his son's name. But instead of using Um, which means mother, we use Abu, father of Abu. So when a man has a son, he is immediately called 
Abu and the name of the son. Let's take Majd for example, okay? A man had a son and he called him Majd. He'd be called Abu Majd all his life. Abu Majd. Now you might think to yourself, what if they don't have a son? Well, it's not very common, but they would be called by their oldest daughter's name. So let's say a couple didn't have any sons and their oldest daughter's name is Noura. The woman would be called Um Noura and the man would be called Abu Noura. It's not very common, I think, because Arab couples keep trying to have a son. Here's something funny. Some guys, when they are younger, let's say in high school or in their early 20s, they're not married, they don't have sons, but they have the habit of nicknaming each other. And sometimes the guy ends up naming his firstborn son with that name. So, you know, because I already have the nickname. Okay, I was called Abu Majd by my friends a long time ago. I might as well call my firstborn son Majd as well. Again, it doesn't happen that often, but I thought it was hilarious to mention it. Here's my question for today. Do you have something similar in your language or culture to address older people respectfully? Do you have something similar to Om or Abu? Let us know. All right, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed the lesson. See you in the next lesson. Assalamu alaikum.